Hello. Today's stories come from r slash am I the butthole. We have four Reddit top posts this video. Our first story puts the tense into contentious, which is obvious straight from the title. So let's start with, would I be the butthole for not paying a five-year-old's medical bills after accidentally injuring him? I, 21-year-old female, babysit from time to time. Whenever I do, if the kid is old enough to understand, I teach them a gesture for, I'm choking, which will be important in a sec. I have babysat a five-year-old who will call Jared twice. I taught him this gesture the first time. He didn't end up eating anything that time. So it wasn't really needed then. But again, I always teach it. The second time, Jared's parents dropped him off at my place. It was long enough that he said he was hungry. I gave him a PB&J and some chopped up grapes, which his parents had sent with him. I was tidying the same room, glancing at Jared now and then, when I suddenly heard him making weak coughing noises. I spun around and he was making that gesture. I thought he must be choking on some pieces of grapes. Obviously, I rushed over and gave him the Heimlich maneuver. However, partway through performing it, Jared shouted at me that it hurt and to stop. It was weird that he yelled because nothing had come out of his mouth. He was crying a lot at this point, and I got him some tissues and immediately called his mom to tell her what happened. She was on her way back to pick him up by then. Jared's mom took him to the doctor, and one of his ribs was cracked. After the appointment, she told me that she wanted me to pay 50% of the cost. She says I should have suspected that Jared was faking choking, which he was, since I had taught him the choking gesture only the time before, and that was his first opportunity to use it. She thinks I should have tried to ask questions to try and get him to talk before using the Heimlich maneuver. She also thinks I should have been gentler with Jared in any case while using it. And she says that if I'd been constantly watching Jared taking bites and swallowing, I could have noticed that he didn't put something in his mouth and then not swallow, meaning I could have noticed that he was only faking before trying the Heimlich. She says the reason she's only asking for 50% is because she knows I'm a student and don't have much money and otherwise, she would ask for the whole cost. She's also going to deduct the cost of babysitting from the medical bill instead of paying me. Furthermore, Jared's mom says she doesn't want me to ever babysit him again. I responded that I would never have agreed to anyway after what happened. This annoyed her because she says that Jared is just barely five and didn't understand that he did something serious. Jared's mom then tried to get my friend, Katie, to babysit Jared. I don't think she knew we were friends. Katie said yes, not knowing what happened. But then I told Katie about the incident, and Katie called Jared's mom and backed out of babysitting. Then I made a post elsewhere about how I tried to save Jared's life, and his mom tried to stick me with half the cost. Edit. And yep, I added that she didn't even pay me for sitting. Basically, I discouraged anyone else from sitting for her. Now Jared's mom is accusing me of twisting the story and complaining that it became harder for her to find babysitters and that some people are cold to her. Would I be the butthole for not paying 50% of Jared's medical bills, minus the babysitting fee his mom already took out like his mom wants me to? Edit. Because I keep getting comments related to this, I need to add more detail about the procedure I used. I have taken a first aid class, which I got an A in. Jared nodded when I asked if he was choking, and he was no longer coughing at this point. Wouldn't cough on demand, maybe because I sounded panicked. I don't know. He wouldn't open his mouth to let me check the airway, by the way. I got his lips open but couldn't pry open his teeth. I should have stared at his chest more closely to see if he was moving, indicative of breathing, before I started the back blows and the abdominal thrusts. But honestly, I was completely freaking out about Jared maybe dying. Edit 2. Whoever decided to harass me with a crisis bot, that was really mature of you and you were totally not behaving like the children I babysit. Edit 3. So Jared's mom found out who some of the other kids I babysit are, and she went to their parents and claimed that I'm violent because of training in martial arts. Which no, I'm not. I've never had to use BJJ for self-defense. But it only would be a very absolute last resort in a crazy situation, and most likely only with an adult. I've never hurt any kid intentionally, and I feel quite bad about Jared's rib. The only accident. Although I still don't think I should be financially responsible, considering that he was faking by using the gesture and by nodding when I asked if he was choking. And that it's not uncommon for a rib to crack during the Heimlich maneuver. Plus, see the steps I went through in my initial edit? None of the parents took Jared's mom seriously at all, as I'd already emailed them with the details of the incident. I've also asked each parent to please emphasize once again to their kids that choking 
is a very serious matter. I told the kids this already, but I think it should be mentioned to them again. I added to please specifically tell them that you shouldn't ever fake it, but that it's okay to use the gesture if you're really choking. The parents were already aware of the gesture I taught the kids. I have more babysitting appointments scheduled for the future. Jared's mom sent texts insulting me for not paying and for turning the other parents against her. Some of the other kids I babysit are Jared's friends. And now, their parents don't want Jared over without either Jared's mom or dad present because of what happened. He is also not allowed to use the trampoline at this other kid's house now even if he has a parent with him. Jared's mom accused me of socially isolating her son and making life harder for her as a divorced working mother. And she called me some pleasant names. I ended up sending her a video of the boy who cried wolf story. Not the butthole for refusing to pay the bills. But I have to say, in spite of being a drama llama, the aftermath of what occurred seems a bit over the top. How did everyone and their dog get involved? Aftermath aside though, pretty sure life-threatening instances require immediate action. Which brings us to our comments. Mostly supporting OP. The ones that didn't were a bit too spicy to include. Nikki Darling said, Honestly, the responses from so many of the people on here are why a lot of people are afraid to try to perform the Heimlich or CPR. No matter what you do, someone is going to armchair quarterback you. She was trying to save a child's life, not knowing he was being a brat and faking it. And yes, five years old is old enough to know you shouldn't do that. Regdal Seeker added, That is my take too. Many moms here don't recognize that the safest route for OP is to not touch the child and just call 911, which will arrive too late. Then she would just receive back pats. Don't worry, you did your best. And no lawsuits. Nanny is risking her career to save your child because newsflash, she is more interested in saving a child's life than her wallet. Don't douse that instinct, fools. Ivy Flo said, not the butthole. Laugh my butt off. She's asking 50%, probably because that's what insurance will pay. And she wants you on the hook for the other half, trying to act like she's gracing you with only half. You should take CPR AED classes, though. I would not try taking this to small claims and starting a court battle like another comment suggests. I would ask a trusted older adult for advice and to mediate if this woman continues to hound you for money. Friend of Hades said, There's no room for being gentle when giving the Heimlich maneuver. Yes, people get injured often, but that's the price to be paid to save a life. And when it comes to choking, acting fast is the difference between life and death. You do not have time to dance around it or second guess if the child is faking it. If he had been really choking, and you had not believed him and tried to make him talk, like his mother suggested, she would be rightfully furious at you risking her son's life. Ragdoll Seeker added, This is true for almost every medical procedure. An injection can pinch your nerves, drugs have side effects, operations have complications, etc. It is always give or take. Doctors balance that scale every day. And, well, for a life-saving maneuver, almost everything goes. Broken ribs are irrelevant next to brain damage and death, even if it was unnecessary. You just don't risk it. I hope you like birthdays because next up we have two stories dealing with birthdays and families. Okay, mostly families because mixing special events and families can only mean one thing, family drama. Story two is titled, am I the jerk for telling my niece my husband and I are not going to her birthday because my husband isn't welcome? I have been with my husband for 10 years. We have been married for five of those years. He has suffered horrific trauma at the hands of his dad. His parents were married and expecting twins when his mom suffered some kind of hemorrhage and she ended up with eclampsia. My husband's mom and twin sister did not make it, but my husband did after a period of time in the NICU. His dad told him it was his fault they died. He had grandparents who meant the world to him and tried to shield him from his dad's anger, but when he was eight years old, they died also. His father then blamed him. He spent the next 10 years hearing day after day that he was the reason. At no point did he have another person to reassure him it wasn't. When we met, he had just started to heal. He was away from his dad and attending therapy. It was a very big fear of his that what his dad said was true. He is a wonderful man and my nieces and nephews adore him. He was always so good with them and the rest of my family. In January 2020, I was pregnant and we went for a scan where we learned I had miscarried. As soon as my husband heard this, something inside of him broke. He started to unravel. He was in the middle of a mental health crisis. He was doing this weird manic laugh that was also a sob. He ran out of the room and I followed after him, concerned. My mom and sister both work at the hospital. Sister's a nurse while mom worked in the little gift store. 
Both saw him in this worst moment. They saw as medical personnel were forced to intervene because he was in the middle of a breakdown, hysterical and totally out of it. He was totally broken and nothing could reach him. It was the scariest moment of my life, the worst moment of his. And they judged him for laughing. Then, when they told the rest of the adults in my family, they also judged him. All of my family were aware of his history. He told them about it years ago. My husband ended up under the care of a psychiatrist who suggested he needed a lot more help than therapy could provide. Instead of understanding, my family no longer wanted him around. They said a man who could laugh at his own wife's miscarriage was not the kind of man they wanted around their kids. I told them I would not leave him behind. My niece is turning 12 this year and is having her first big party since COVID. She called and said she wanted us there, but she hadn't seen us on her mom's list. I told her we wouldn't be able to come and that I was sorry. We both were. She was upset and asked why she never saw us. Why we wouldn't come to her birthday party. Why we miss them all now. I told her that my husband was not welcome by the other adults in the family anymore. She apparently yelled at her parents and mine. Then I got crap from them for telling her what I did. They said I had no business saying that. Am I the jerk? Definitely not the jerk. The adults need to take ownership of their decision to exclude OP's husband, creating a family rift. Huge eye roll to this level of judgment. Makes one wonder how OP turned out to be such an amazing and supportive person having been raised in this family. I think telling the niece is totally warranted. What if she thought it was because of something she did or related to her in any way? Let's head to the comments where OP sticks around to answer a couple questions. Everything but my years said, not the jerk. Schedule a time to see your niece separately, if possible, or send her a gift. Your family's reaction to a mental health crisis is abhorrent. He's lucky to have you to support him and understand that none of this is a reflection on him. OP replied, that won't be possible. They made it clear after I stood by my husband that if I want to see any of my nieces and nephews, I need to do it where they can make sure he isn't around. Everything but my years responded, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. I'm sorry your family sucks. It's all just malarkey said, not the jerk. I respect you for standing with your husband. That was the right move. If they won't welcome both of you, then neither of you attend. As far as telling your niece the truth, I agree with that too. You have nothing to hide. There was nothing inappropriate about revealing this to her. And it sounds like you kept the explanation short. OP replied, I did. I told her none of what happened, just that he was no longer welcome. It's all just malarkey replied. Sounds like you handled it perfectly. Slight Bar said, sister's a nurse while mom worked in the little gift store. Both saw. Big violation of privacy if they told family what happened at the hospital, not the butthole. Standard reception added, really? Report them both to the hospital. Queen of Damaged Goods added, this. You need to. He broke. That's okay, poor man. Not the jerk. Good for you to stand with him. How are you doing? Make sure you take care of yourself. Well, if the last story got you worked up, hold your horses because the next story is a double dose. Story three is titled, Am I the butthole for walking out of my husband's birthday party after he started laughing at me? I, 32-year-old female, just completed my treatment for a medical issue that affected my body. I had gained weight due to this medical condition and also medication and none of my old clothes were fitting anymore. I bought new fitting clothes, but for my husband's birthday party, he asked me to wear one of my old dresses that was one of his favorites. To appease him, I said yes, although I didn't feel comfortable wearing it, especially after the weight gain. He was at the restaurant with his family and friends when I arrived with my sister. As soon as he saw me walking in, he busted out laughing. He pointed at the dress and was going hysterical saying, oh my God. I felt so incredibly mad, especially when the others started laughing as well. One of his friends started whistling in a mocking tone. I turned around instantly and walked out and my sister followed me. I went home and cried a little, but he kept calling nonstop. He came home and started talking about how oversensitive I was and that it was just a natural reaction he had upon seeing me in this dress again after all this time. He said I overreacted and made a scene over nothing. He also said I ruined his birthday and urged me to get therapy for this oversensitivity that I'm inflicting upon him. Am I the jerk? Did I overreact? He's so upset he refused to even receive the gift. Edit. I need to explain the way he laughed more. He first started giggling and tried to cover his mouth. Then, in a matter of seconds, he burst out laughing in the middle of the restaurant. The guests were confused. Then they must have understood why he was laughing because they joined in and his friend whistled at me mockingly 
while repeatedly turning his head like something caught his attention. Could it be that I overreacted? It could be just me getting overwhelmed because joking and laughing is not new when it comes to him. He's the kind to tease about any and everything, even with family, the kids also. He also said he was caught off guard, and so I shouldn't blame him for his reaction. Not the jerk. He's the one that caused the scene, not OP. And he's insensitive. I would think it's the group dynamic that pushed this over the edge. Teasing is not for everyone, but it works for some. Generally speaking, though, doing it in a group setting where everyone bandwagons is not cool. And even worse when it's in public. Let's check out the comments where everyone dunks on OP's husband. Did you really expect anything else? Funky Orange Penguin said, He pushed you to wear the dress even though you didn't want to. He made fun of you when you wore said dress. He stood by as you were publicly humiliated. He didn't follow you when you walked out and belittled your feelings. He told you to go to therapy, not so that you're happier, but so you can stop annoying him. He tears you down physically and emotionally. He denies any wrongdoing and blames only you. Why are you with him? Not the butthole. Jorg Schnauzer said, not the jerk. Hope he doesn't overreact when you serve this butthole with divorce papers. Sock United added, she should have her sister present when he's served so they can point and laugh. Shrimpy Barbie said, not the jerk. Next time he tries to initiate and he takes off his clothes, laugh at his eggplant. Sausage Basket Diva added, and then tell him he's oversensitive when he gets pissed off. We all know I like to leave things on a wholesome note. Well, I tricked you because not today. It's family drama. Does it ever end well? You'll find out in story four. It's titled, Am I the butthole for refusing to help my sister with her house purchase and telling her and my stepfather that it's because of how they treated me as a child? I'm a 29-year-old female. When I was about 10, my mom married my stepfather. I have an older brother, Luke, who was 15. My stepfather had Amy and Ada, who were 12 and 11. We didn't come from a privileged background. My mom was a minimum wage worker and my dad was absent. Our stepfather had a very good income. Their deal was that they wouldn't combine finances and they would each contribute equally to the household and then each takes care of their children with our spare money. So my mom never had anything for us and my stepfather was spending big on his kids. This included holidays, which Luke and I were excluded from. Stepfather would pay for mom, but not us. Luke and I also shared a room, even though Amy and Ada had their own rooms and we had a guest room, because stepfather insisted that he was paying more towards the house, so my mom's share would only get her one room for the kids. Luke and I were constantly teased for the situation by the three of them as we grew up. My mom always said that we should be thankful because if it wasn't for our stepfather, We would not be living in a nice home in a good neighborhood. Anyway, Luke and I became determined to be able to take care of ourselves so that we wouldn't need to take nonsense from anyone. We have both done quite well with our careers and finances, and we are in a very good place. Since turning 18 and moving out, my relationship with the three of them has been very limited. I wouldn't call us friends, but we can exist peacefully if we are in the same place. I visited my mom recently, and my stepfather mentioned that Amy wants to buy a house now that she's pregnant. He asked me if I'm able to help out a little with the deposit. The house is £500,000 and she needs a £150,000 deposit. She has £100,000 so far, £25,000 on her own, £25,000 from her mom, and £50,000 from stepfather. He was asking if Luke and I can help cover the extra £50,000. He said he'd pay us back as part of the inheritance eventually. I said no. He insisted that Luke and I both own our houses outright and with our incomes so we should be able to help. I said, whether I can or not is irrelevant. My answer is no. He reminded me that Luke and I each gave £10,000 to our cousin for buying a house as a gift. Amy is my sister, and he's offering to pay us back. I said that was our choice then. This is my choice now. He insisted that we should be willing to help out our family, if we're able to. I replied back, like how you helped me and Luke when we were kids? Everyone just went quiet when I said this. After a while, He said if he went back in time, he'd have done things differently, treated all four of us equally. I said that's good of you, but doesn't make you entitled to my money now. He said he knows he's not entitled. That's why he's asking and promising to pay it back. I said the answer still is no, not entitled to a loan either. My mom later told me I could have turned him down without being a butthole or bringing up childhood, which he already feels guilty about. Am I the jerk? Absolutely not the butthole. His regrets come up when he needs a favor? 
The comments cover most of what I'd have to say, but I will add that I think it's awesome that OP and Luke turned their super crappy childhood situation into a drive for success. Fully independent and financially successful, the petty side of me sees this as a dose of revenge. As they say, the best form of revenge is living well. Let's check out the comments where OP provides lots of extra details. Alarming Work said, absolutely not the jerk. And I think you did turn him down without bringing up your childhood, but he kept pressuring you, so it's totally understandable that you told the truth. OP replied, exactly. I only brought up our childhood after he tried to guilt me about how we're family and should help each other. Initially, it was just a simple rejection. Resident Capri said, I don't think he feels guilty. He only regrets treating you guys badly now that you and Luke have turned out successful. Maroongrad said, not the jerk. He needs to know how badly he screwed up. And he didn't do anything to try and make up for it either, did he? Nope. Not until he wanted your money for his kid that bullied you. Nope. Not a cent. Unless you get a loan, notarized, for a freaking ridiculous amount of interest. OP replied, no, he didn't do anything to make up for it. He has only mentioned a few times that he wished he had done things differently. And only after Luke and I had become completely independent and successful. So only when he knew we wouldn't need or want anything from him. For my last cryptic note, added, how convenient. Elena Advice said, not the jerk, but your mom. Wow, I could never stay married to someone who treated my kids with such disparity and teased you about it on top of it. Sounds like your mom was invited to do things and your stepfather did pay for her. How did that work? Did your mom actually take him up on it and do things without you? Because if so, you're a saint for being in contact with your mom at all. OP replied, yes, she did take him up on those offers. They dropped me and Luke off at our grandmother's and went on holidays. Happened multiple times every year. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.